Did you know Marine Rescue New South Wales volunteers are on duty 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year? They give their time to help you make every journey safer. My name's Brad Whitaker, and this is Marine Rescue TV. Well, thanks for joining us. In this episode, we'll take a ride on some high-powered watercraft and we'll make a splash with some very extraordinary marine mammals. But first, let's head to beautiful Lord Howe Island for the commissioning of our brand new rescue base and vessel. Well, as the member for Port Macquarie, it's absolutely exciting to be here today with all of the guests and officials. To be here, here as part of the opening of my fourth marine rescue unit across the Port Macquarie electorate. Probably the most picturesque one, but one that, that really has some outstanding capabilities. And collectively with the, uh, the new unit and, and the vessel, it's over $1.5 million uh, we're seeing invested into Lord Howe Island for this particular facility. And, and given you are a maritime community, it's only appropriate that you get access uh, to the best that we can provide, the best money can buy. I want to thank all the rescue volunteers who are here today to not just see the vessel but the opening of the new facility. I think um, it speaks volumes for the people of Lord Howe Island and I wish you well and great safety with the vessel. The reality is that working on the seas is dangerous and so it's appropriate uh, that we can bless this ship and pray for those who will serve on it for their safety. We're blessed to have uh, the interests of you know, state ministers, uh, our local member, our police commissioner, um, and certainly the, the commissioner of Marine Rescue and the deputy commissioner of Marine Rescue. Uh, terrific for them to come out. We do appreciate it, the community appreciates it. It's been an absolutely amazing event. A new building, specially architect designed for us, 16 metre boat, refurbished in superb condition, really great qualified crew who are committed to training and committed to doing what we all do, which is make Marine Rescue the best rescue organisation in Australia. From the biggest vessel in our fleet to one of the smallest, Marine Rescue, New South Wales use personal watercraft to facilitate rescues on dangerous coastal bars. Let's meet a father and daughter duo at our Sussex Inlet unit on the beautiful south coast to find out more. We use a helmet which has a radio microphone built into it and a, a speaker and the radio which is to, keeps us in contact with uh, the base and the, the other rescue vehicles. We also use a vest, a high-vis uh, jacket to show us where we are and who we are. A high-grade wetsuit to keep us warm and booties. Um, we have the rescue sled on the craft which we can put our rescue persons on board. We have some extra equipment in here where we've got uh, flares, tow ropes, anchors. Um, it's also have a small first aid kit if we need to render assistance. The reason why we joined Marine Rescue Sussex is one day we actually needed help. Um, so we got stranded out in St George's Basin and we caught up our local uh, Marine Rescue. Um, we had a boat come out and help us get back into safety on shore. Um, and that's when me and Dad kind of questioned, is, is this something that we can do to help our community and be a member, and be a part of this? Uh, so we signed up together. Training included launching the RWCs, doing our pre-operational checks, and then driving and manoeuvring on the waterways. We'll also be using the radio to have communications back to the base. X-ray 12, we have a report of an overturned dinghy just north of the boat ramp. Please proceed to that location. Over as well as learning how to drive the RWCs through our bar crossings and how to safely pick up a patient. It's been an excellent experience for us. If like Paul and Jesse you'd like to join Marine Rescue New South Wales, you can hit the Become a Volunteer tab on our website. Now navigating on coastal waters can be challenging at the best of times, but particularly at this time of year given it's the whale migration period. We caught up with staff from New South Wales National Parks and Wildlife Service to get some tips on boating during this very special time of year. From May through to August, 
we see whales migrating north up to Queensland because they're going up to the um, warmer weathers and the warmer climate to have their babies and also to breed. And then from August back to December, we'll see whales migrating south back down to Antarctica, often with their uh, mothers with their calves, and they're going back down to the cooler waters to feed. If you're lucky enough to be out on your boat and you see a whale, it's really important if you stay a minimum of 100 metres from an adult whale and it actually goes up to 300 metres if it's an adult and calf. Okay, so you're in your boat and you're super lucky to have this whale coming towards you. Really important not to do any sudden movements. We want to protect you, we want to protect your boat and also the whale. So slow your motors right down and just be cautious. If the whale is coming towards you, just let it swim past you and then move away when you can and when it's safe to do so. What we do ask though is that you don't stop your boat and wait for the whales to come towards you. But if it is coming towards you, just be cautious and slow right down and enjoy the experience. The easiest and best way to see a whale is get in your car, drive to a headland somewhere on the New South Wales coast and sit down with your picnic in binoculars and have a look because you may be lucky enough between May and December to see the whales migrating. If you have your own boat and you go out you may also see a whale or join a commercial tour that takes you out to view whales because they know the regulations and the distances and you may be lucky enough to get up close and personal but in a regulated manner. At whale watching today, the whales are uh, putting on a show for us. Two lovely little whales over there having a frolic, heading south. So they're what are they doing, Mike? They're, it looks like they're lying on their backs, just slapping their fins around. Yeah, they do that to communicate. Uh, there's another whale up behind us, just off Botany Bay, and um, they're probably having a bit of fun. Um, whales that get entangled in crab pots or shark nets. We have a highly experienced team that will go out working with other agencies to try and disentangle this animal. It's really important that you keep an eye on that animal for us. That is the best job that you possibly can do, especially if you're in a boat. And um, that way we can find you and we can then find the entangled whale. Please don't try and disentangle it yourself. This is a very distressed animal. As a uh, yeah, that specialised disentanglement team, we do spend a lot of time training, working training. together, fine tuning um, our operations. Um, you know, um, hopefully improving our success rate when it comes to disentangling a large marine wildlife. Working as part of a team is one of the key things I love about uh, my job in working with marine mammals and I have the privilege to be able to work with uh, marine rescue volunteers. They're there helping support as the parent vessel, um, helping with my safety and helping look after myself and my team and I really appreciate all of them who do come out to give up their time to help us out there on the water in this important operation. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, hit that like button and also the bell so we can notify you of future episodes. Until next time, stay safe on the water.